Um, your videos, please. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's lesson is going to be about the psyche, the higher mind, the ori, the oversoul. And I have our Patreon members with us tonight. I am disabling chat because this amenity is for Patreon to do Q&A towards the end of this. So they're going to be able to ask questions. And then once this video is completed, once this live stream is completed, then Feel free. I'll open up the comment section and you can leave comments if you like. Please hit the like button if you are joining us this evening. I'm going to reiterate, just like I just did in Patreon, what the word psyche means. And psycho, we're going to be teaching out of the chapter one out of the book by Maxwell Maltz called Psycho Cybernetics. And I was just explaining that one of the root words of psycho goes back to the Greek word psyche, which means soul. And on this channel, I'm always talking about soul, meaning ori in Ifa terms, or your higher self, your oversoul. Everyone's always talking about manifestation and positive affirmations and things like that. And all you have to do is just encourage yourself and tell yourself, I'm great, I'm wonderful, I'm spectacular, I'm fantastic, and I'm gonna manifest a million dollars but one thing that a lot of us don't do before we whip out our vision boards and our positive affirmations is we forget to sweep under the rug in our consciousness of the negative things that we say to ourselves. The negative images that we have of ourselves based on our family interactions, based on somebody rejecting us from high school, and that tends to go into your psyche and stay in your subconscious when you are trying to manifest. So when you say, oh, I'm so great, I'm a queen, in the back of your mind, that little girl in you or that young man is you say, no, you ain't. You don't really believe that. Oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. You don't really think you're going to be a millionaire. That's what the sponsoring thought, that's of Neil Donald Walsh's quote, the author of Conversations with God. He says the sponsoring thought is your one blockage and manifesting what you want. I am loved. I am a goddess. You know what? The back of the, of the sixth grader in you was saying, no, you're not. You don't believe that. A lot of times. I'm not saying that's the case with everybody, but there is something that you want to manifest, have, keep, and experience, and you have to make sure there are not old sponsoring thoughts keeping you from that. Sometimes it's not a negative self-affirmation stuck in your consciousness about yourself. Sometimes it's all about listening to statistics. Oh, you're over 35 years old. You've hit the wall. Nobody's gonna want you. And all of these type of things. Or you can't do that. You're a minority. You can't do that. You don't know this language well enough. Or you don't have this certification. You don't have this education and things like that. So those little buts are the obstacles in manifesting what you want quicker. And even when you do manifest it, it's an obstacle in enjoying what you get. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And we're going to do an exercise. Now, I created this particular exercise inspired by Chapter 1 in the Psycho-Cybernetics book, all about the self-image. Now, once again, I repeat, if you all have ever done a vision board before, They'll tell you put a, to put a lot of positive self-images on that vision board of what you want. A master at a vision board or a manifestation board will tell you to put pictures on yourself in that car that you want, in that house that you want, with that mate that you want. And even then, it's often based on an unclear perception that we have of ourself and our self-image. So... To tell yourself, I'm great, I'm a queen, I'm a goddess, I'm a king, I got this, I'm strong, I'm this, I'm that, I can manifest this, I'm a millionaire, and to not have a realistic view of yourself and your past failures and your, fa and your past accomplishments, it's kind of like looking in the mirror and looking in a foggy mirror. You know how the mirror steams up when you're taking a shower? Or you know how you see a mirror and it's dirty? So you don't have an accurate view of what your subconscious is saying about who you are. In Ifa, we say that the soul the, the, lies in the solar plexus area. We call it the ori inu. This is where our information about our past lives sits, here in our gut. 
The top of our head is our apex. This is where we get spiritual downloads. The Iwaju is where we get vision. Like how the Bible says, without a vision, people perish. The back of the neck is our hunches, our connection to our cerebral cortex and our kundalini energy and our central nervous system, the epako, where the messages go from the body to the head, from the top to the bottom, rising to the crown chakra, the Christ consciousness. But with all that being said, all I'm really trying to say is you can do all the positive affirmations you want. You can listen to all the binaural beats you want in your subconscious because the subconscious doesn't know the difference between the lie and the truth. But if your sponsoring thought is of doubt of yourself or it's of imposter syndrome, I can't really do that. Or I'm not really that. I don't have enough information. I, then it's going to block your manifestation happening the way you want to. So I'm going to give you another example of this of chapter called the self-image. Many people will say, if you ask a person, oh, I like myself, then you want to ask them, why do you like yourself? Some people may say, oh, because my melanin is popping. I'm a sister. I got that magic and this and that. Okay. You ask another person, why do you like yourself? Oh, I'm Italian and this and that, and I'm proud of my culture and all of this and that. Why do you like yourself? Oh, I pledge this sorority. I pledge this fraternity, or I, I achieved this degree and this and that. And the people say, well, I got initiated and I got these titles and stuff. So every time we accomplish something, it's like this. It's like putting on layers of clothes. This is an accomplishment, right? So we're putting on layers, right, to feel better about ourselves. Once I join this sorority, I'm going to feel better about myself. Once I join this fraternity, I'm going to feel better about myself. Once I initiate to my Risha, I'm going to feel better about myself. Psych. <laughs> uh, you can, but Ori comes before Orisha. Without Ori, there can be no Orisha. The Orisha is the crown that sits on the initiate's head. The Ori is the base of the crown. If there were no head, there would be no crown right? You cannot have a crown and have a head, but there must be a head to support the crown. So a good head is the foundation of a sparkling crown. And we attain that before in order to enjoy the fruits of that initiation. So I got this and that. I think I look sexy and this and that. I'm quoting somebody. And I like this about myself. I think I'm cute or this and that. Oh, well, I'm a good parent. So this is another layer. This is another accomplishment. And we put on all these layers, right? I'm of this ethnic group. I'm of this race. I graduated from this school. I am Dr. So-and-so. I am attorney so-and-so. We put on layers. I'm Ia so-and-so. I'm Baba so-and-so, baby. You can't tell me nothing. And you steady putting on layers. I got my nursing degree. I got my... um my certification to be a massage therapist. And we put on all these layers, right? We feeling better about ourselves, right? We finally accomplished those goals. We manifest in those goals. And we got all those layers on. Oh, I got my butt surgery, baby. I feel real better about myself. Let's put on that layer. Let's put on that layer. Now, you got all these layers on. All these accomplishments that make you feel good about yourself, right? But I have a question for you all. How would you feel about yourself if you were not, I mean, okay, say for instance, you love your racial group or your ethnic group. There's no such thing as race. But say for instance, if you were a different group or a different race that you didn't want to be, would you still like yourself? If you were a different gender, would you still like yourself? If you were in a wheelchair, would you still like yourself? If you didn't have the body that you had, would you still like yourself? If you didn't have the accomplishments and the degrees and the certification that you have, would you still like yourself? So once we shed our accomplishments, one accomplishment, take that off. We manifested all this stuff on our vision board, right? Another accomplishment, take that off. We just manifesting all the stuff to make us feel better. Baby, when I move to Kansas, I'm going to feel better about myself. When I get my spouse, I'm going to feel better about myself. Oh, I got a ring. He put a ring on it. She put a ring on it. I feel better about myself. Let's take all that off. That's another layer right there. Let's take all that off. 
Oh, I got my favorite ring. I manifested my favorite ring. I feel better about myself. Now, don't let me start pulling off lashes and hair and all that other type of stuff. Okay, I ain't going to go that far. Okay? So, all of these accomplishments, right? All these accomplishments. Excuse me, y'all. One more, I think. Here we go. All right. Right? And I'm not pulling everything off. All these things that we have accomplished. So let's just say I've stripped down to the bare bones, hypothetically speaking. This is yourself, right? Taking everything off, peeling all the lipstick, the lashes, everything, peeling it all off. Would you still like yourself without those accomplishments and manifestations? Because most of us, we just want to feel better. We, we want to manifest all this stuff. We want to put it on our vision board to feel better. But the key is, in order to become a magnet, then we must feel better with the raw, naked version of ourselves, even, even if we don't like it all the way. So I would like to introduce something tonight. It's called, um, you know, you have your vision board. It's more of a reality board. So let me say this about the late Maxwell Maltz. He was a cosmetic surgeon. He, and he said that when he did people's facial surgery and changed their appearance, a lot of times it changed their self-image, some of them. But with some of his patients, he said that they felt worse about themselves or nothing changed at all. So that's when he got into the principle of psycho-cybernetics because self-image can be altered or it may not be altered at all depending on how we feel about ourselves. So tonight, I want to talk about, before you do your next vision board for this spring equinox, happy spring equinox, by the way, let's do a get realistic with our self board. So the assignment is, which we're going to be doing in the 44 tier Patreon, you want to get a board and you want to put a photo of yourself on that board. I'm talking about one of your worst pictures where you, you don't like the way your weight looks or you, maybe you were in a bad time in your life. Put that picture on your board before you do a vision board for this year or whatever type of manifestation work you do put a picture of yourself on there and this is going to be a realistic board this is stripping down all the accomplishments all of the titles um all of the goals that you think will make you feel better and getting back to your core because the whole thing is with ori with your soul your oversoul your psyche it goes beyond the fact that you're a man, a woman, a sister, melanated, Italian, um, East Indian, German. It goes beyond all of that. Who are you without your ethnic identity? Who are you without your racial identity? Who are you without identifying with the struggles of your group? Who are you beyond that? When you strip all of that down and you take all of those layers off, that's your inner self. That's your ori. That's the part of you that doesn't need those accomplishments to feel happy and satisfied. And when we go back and we peel back the layers of the part that we like about ourselves, regardless of circumstances that we're born into and the parts that we're, we really don't like about ourselves and we're honest with ourselves and we have mercy on ourselves to correct those areas that we do have control over, we become a magnet. And rather than just vision boarding, which is still good, some of the things will just come to you automatically because we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. So with all those titles, houses, cars, um, marriage, you can still have all of that and still feel very empty because a lot of people feel that the layers are going to make them feel better rather than dealing with the core things. So for example, I'm going to draw a picture. Let's just pretend like this is a picture of me or a person, whoever. Okay. So I have this picture of myself. Remember I said the worst picture of yourself. This is the part one. You want to take a picture of yourself and post it to a board. On one side of this uh, board, you want to ask yourself, what is it the things about myself that need working on? So you're going to be like a cosmetic surgeon. If you ever have seen what a cosmetic surgeon does, like watching some of these shows or whatnot, 
they, they take a picture of you and they draw what parts they're going to edit. Okay, this needs fixing right here, this and that. So you want to do that for yourself, your own honest self-assessment. Because we, we manifest more authentic when we're more authentic with ourselves. When we're not lying to ourselves or we have a more accurate depiction of our image. Self-image, once again, is, one, is important. So this part, things... Let me see. Y'all can't see that. Let me move this over here. Things I like about myself. Then list them here on your board. Maybe you're a good cook and this and that. Whatever it is, put it on this side. On the opposite side of the board, be honest with yourself. What are the things that you don't like about yourself? And if it's not something that you don't like about yourself, what circumstances in your life that you don't currently like, that you don't currently vibe with, that you wish would change and transform for the better? Things I don't like. And I invite you to divide the areas that you don't like with areas you can change, with maybe a, um, a, a transformation in your habits, and then the areas that you won't be able to change in this lifetime, that you have absolutely no control over in this lifetime, but that you will have to learn to accept. So on one part of the things I don't like, things I can change. I hope y'all are following me. And then the things I can't change such as, you know, your parents or something that happened in the past. We can't change the past, but we move forward. And the thing is, this is something I would say should be done periodically because at different phases of your life, you may feel great about yourself, but maybe you hit your 20s and then you have a season in your life that's trying or you hit your 50s or, you know, you're going through a change in your life and it's, and it's time to reassess yourself. And some people may say, well, I've accomplished all this and that, and it got me to this point. I liked myself back then, and it got me to success. But you're not the person you were back then 15 or 20 years ago. So who are you now? So this board, I would suggest to do periodically when things change in your life. Maybe you have just become a new mother or a new father. Maybe you've just become a wife. Maybe you've just moved. Things shift and change. So we are always reassessing where we are. Just like if you work at a, um, a job or career, maybe they'll do a yearly evaluation. So doing a yearly evaluation is always good before creating a vision board or a manifestation board. Because if we are real with ourselves about the parts of ourselves that we don't like, that we project onto other people, I promise you it will be much easier to invest in ourselves and get what we need and to take it more seriously and not take it for granted when we are investing in ourselves. I hope y'all are following me. I hope I'm not, I hope this is not going over anyone's head. It's pretty simple. I'm making it plain as possible. Things I like about myself, things I don't like, things I can change, things I can't change. So that's what you want to base this on first and foremost. Now you want to on a different paper, hypothetically speaking, I'm not going to go through the demonstration again, get a picture of yourself with your favorite picture of yourself. And I want you to eulogize yourself. I don't mean eulogize as if you are uh, at your own funeral, but bigging yourself up, encouraging yourself based on that picture. But it does not, it cannot have anything to do with a title that you have earned. Um, a career accomplishment, anything like that. It needs to be based on your own self-value. Things such as things that you've survived and overcome that you didn't think you were going to make it out of that. Um, so looking back, how the old people say, I look back and see how the Lord was there for me or how, you know, how the creator was there for me. Look back at those times where you thought you could not make it and you did make it through and big yourself up on that other piece of paper. Look at this one over so this is where you're going to put a bunch of affirmations about yourself. And this is what you want to do in the mirror. This is active vision board because the mirror itself can be a vision board. So going in that mirror and saying, you remember that time um, you were homeless when you were 17 and you didn't know how you were going to eat, but you made it through. Now you have a house, you're a homeowner. 
You talk to yourself like that. You remind yourself of the things you overcame. Remember that uh, violation that you survived and now you're helping other people. Remember all of the miracles that you have uh, experienced in this life and write it on that picture of yourself that you like. So once again, you start with the side, with the paper, with the picture you don't like of yourself and the things that you would like to edit, that you have control over and that you don't have control over. This is going all the way back to psycho-cybernetics. We're still on the same topic. And then changing the page, putting a picture you like of yourself and praising, your, praising yourself, giving yourself credit, giving creator credit for what you've been through and what you've made it through. And also giving yourself credit for who you are. I'll give you another example of what I mean. Beyond titles and accomplishments. If you didn't have a title or an accomplishment or this career or that career, would the people that like you, would they still like you? And I'll give you an example. The late Notorious B.I.G. A lot of women said, ooh, he was sexy and attractive. And some people said, I don't see what they see in him. It was his inner magnetism. He liked himself regardless of what you thought he looked like. He liked himself. And because he liked himself and because he knew his talents, he knew his limits, then it attracted the right people and the right opportunities to him. So that's what I mean. Have you ever met somebody to where you look at and be, who is that? And then you start talking, they just light up the whole room and you can just tell that they like themselves and they don't have to be a doctor, an ER, a baba, a title, and this and that. And then you see somebody, they have all these accomplishments and somebody else comes in the room that has the same accomplishments and they start feeling threatened. Or you see a woman, she's married, and as soon as a, another group of beautiful women come in the room, they're they clutching their husband's arm and this and that. We want to get to the point where we don't feel threatened when somebody else who has accomplished those same things and put on those same layers are in the room and we still feel our own inner authenticness. Say, for instance, if you were a box of, let me, let me get something, I'm going to give you an example. This isn't an ad either for this product unless they want to send me some more of these. Okay, so this is, a, this is one of my favorite snacks. Okay, if you and other people in the room had your same accomplishments, like this box of rice cakes, what makes these rice cakes any different, right? You know, everybody say, oh, I'm a goddess, I'm a queen, I'm a king, and, and then somebody down the street is saying the same thing. What makes it special? So it's plenty of these goddesses, kings, queens, and doctors, lawyers, titles, eos, babas. But in a room full of the same people who have the same packaging, they got the same hair bundles you got, they got the same lashes you got, all of that, the same surgery you got, what stands out about you amongst a group of others that when people take a glance at all of you, they say, oh, just look at them. They're all the same. What stands out about you? That thing that stands about, out about you in a room, that's your inner magnetism. And that's what you want to activate in the self-image to attract, which is not only what you want to have, but what you're supposed to have. Because when we do it from a realistic standpoint, we'll know what's meant for us and what's not meant for us. We'll know our limits and then we'll know our uh, capabilities where we are limitless. Because if we don't have a strong enough assessment of our limits then that means we can't operate in the areas where we are great where we do shine so i'm gonna turn on the patreon y'all please unmute i got a question for y'all i want some feedback i want to hear some voices please don't be shy tell me please if you are a bag of chips all the bags are the same y'all you in the same room what is it about you that stands out from the other chips that got the same packaging what stands out? My personality. Beautiful. I'm not salty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm courageous. Okay. Yes. What do you like about yourself that distinguishes you from the other bags, from the other Saras, from the other frats, from the other ERs, from the other Babas, from the other doctors, from the other nurses, etc., from the other lawyers? What is it that you like about you if that title was stripped away from you? I like that I'm real and I'm not afraid to 
dive into the darker side of life. Beautiful. Okay, let's say, for instance, life happens. And maybe they, you're in your, your, I don't know, your 80s, and they give you a diagnosis of dementia. How would you restructure that point of your life to like yourself and accept yourself despite the fact you are going through a dementia experience in your human illusion? How would you like, or if you find yourself in a wheelchair or something happens in, I don't know, appearance changes, job changes, how would you be able to like yourself beyond the reasons you liked yourself before? Well, when I was in a wheelchair, I liked the fact that I was still positive, and I know that that wasn't my final destination, and mm -hmm. then, you know, I was, I was, I was going to one day be out of it. Yes. Let's put it like this, yeah. Um, what if it was a situation where they say, where, where somebody would say, well, the person wouldn't come out of it? I would still say that their mindset and their positivity and, you know, their outlook on things would get them through. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, it's oh. not about your looks or anything like that. It would be about, you know, how you behave, how you act in certain situations, mm -hmm. your personality, of course, things like that. Yes, absolutely. I would, I would say, like, how I, you make others feel. How you make others feel. That's beautiful. Like, oh, sorry. Hey, Alana. Hey, I'm Alana. <laughs> Yes, we missed you. <laughs> Thank right. you, Boo. Um, I can kind of speak on like still being in a position, you know, in certain life. Cause listen, I've been always, I've been skinny, I've been athletic, mm -hmm. I've been big as hell. Like my back is broad, and it's, and right, and when I see myself in pictures, I'm like, God damn, why do I look like this? Mm -hmm. And I'm still there, and being at all body sizes. I've experienced everything, and like I know what it feels like. I know how people approach you at different body sizes because mm -hmm. I've been all of them, yes. right? So I, when it comes to like body positivity mm -hmm. or self love, I have all the experience because like, I've been everywhere. Yes. And being at the way I'm, I'm at, you know, because I had kids and stress really keeps weight on you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. but like being here. I truly understand what body positivity is. It's not necessarily feeling like the way you're at is okay because I do feel less healthy at this point. It's more like learning to love yourself and work with what you got mm -hmm. while you're still where you are. Yes. And I guess one good benefit to me, I've started to take my health more seriously, mm -hmm. not by berating myself, but just by understanding like, listen, yeah, you this big and it's cool. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself on the, the video. Yeah, that, that this is where you at. This is where mm -hmm. you at. So like, stop beating yourself. What can yes. you do right now to make yourself feel better? Like, one, get good underwear. Yes. So when you on a video and you turn to the side, you don't have rolls. You got yeah. good giddy underwear on. You know, like, <laughs> work with it. Like, be dead ass with yourself and say like, this is what I have and I'm have to work with. Let me put it down. I'm mm -hmm. coming. Yes. And honestly, and also notice that this is where I'm at. Like, you can beat yourself up or you can just make conscious decisions every day to make yourself feel better. Yes. Like, don't have certain things in the house. And being at this way, it actually, I love fashion. Being at this way, mm -hmm. what it, to be able to know what kind of practical advice I can give to other women of my size. So, they have to go into the world. They can't. They can't stay at home all day. Yes. So how can you? What kind of practical advice can you give to women who are actually plus size, so they can feel good and feel sexy yes. when they go out? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's how being at this size right now has helped. Yes. 
So Alana is saying, don't be hard on yourself. So please, I don't want to give the impression as well that I'm saying be hard on yourself. When I say look at your pluses and minuses, I'm just saying let's look at it realistically and then lovingly work on the things we can change and then accept certain things that we don't have control over in this life. So once again, sister is reminding us to be honest with ourselves, but also be gentle with ourselves too and to love on ourselves no matter where we are as far as body image, um, career change, family change, life changes, no matter what phase of life you're in, embracing that fully and not rejecting that new aspect of yourself. And also remember, we can always go back and change certain things currently that we do have control over, such as our habits and the things that we say to ourselves and going back and erasing what the subconscious has absorbed from what our mothers have said, fathers have said, what the kids in middle school said, or whoever said, a spouse, an abusive person, we can go back and erase that because if we do not erase and eradicate the sponsoring thoughts, and if we don't have a realistic view of what we're working with, plus and minuses, then it's very difficult to enjoy what we manifest. Once again, anybody can manifest anything. Ye are gods. But in order to maximize what's meant for us, a true assessment, a true vision, a clear vision of ourselves before creating the vision boards is something that you will find that will enhance your life tremendously. Once again, the principle of what I'm speaking about tonight is about the book Psycho Cybernetics by the late Maxwell Maltz. And we're, we're on the, um, uh oh, please mute just really quickly. And we're talking about the chapter one about self image. Because a lot of people will manifest things based on images, right? So who are you beyond being a mystical being, a siren, a mermaid, a fairy, a god, um, a demigod, all of those things. If you were stripped down of all of those things, who would you be and would you like that person at your core? Would you still think that your jokes are funny if no one laughs? Would you still think that you're smart and intelligent? if nobody's listening. So that's the part of ourselves that we get to in order to create the inner magnet. So instead of putting the layers on from the outside in, we start with the inside out. We build ourselves and we build the layers within ourself, within our ori, within our higher self. And then the other layers are just icing on the cake, right? So it's like making a cake. We are the cake, the achievements, the titles are just the frosting. And if you peel the frosting off, the cake will be sweet enough. It can sustain itself without the frosting if it's a good cake. So that's all I'm saying uh, at this particular time. Now, another thing I want to mention, too, is some of the other things. Say, for instance, you don't have any body image issues. You don't have any issues with your accomplishments and your career and wanting a family. But you can have all of the things that you want. But... Other things that will block your manifestations from being successful. And another negative thing in your self-image is guilt. Maybe you got a DUI or you hurt somebody. Whatever it is, guilt. Feeling unworthy. Feeling like it's not going to happen for you. Feeling um, certain limitations because of the group you belong to. Feeling like you can't do it because of your age. Because somebody told you that you're not, that you're too old to do it or you're too young to do it. All of those different things. Whereas if you look at energy, everybody goes through different seasons at different times. And it depends on your karma that you come to with in this life. Sometimes certain people are destined to go through their less attractive periods when they're young. And then they have a beautiful ending. Some people have their heyday when they're young and then they have their troubles when they're older. You know what I'm saying? Everybody goes through different seasons at different times and it has nothing to do with chronological age because who we really are is beyond age. We are ageless. And these bodies, if we take care of them, the bodies are really supposed to be ageless too. So how many limits have you allowed people to put on you because you're supposed to be this race? You're supposed to be this age. You're supposed to act like this and sit down somewhere and you're a woman. You can't say anything or you're this and that. How many titles and burdens have people put upon you that are stopping you from going after what creator has for you, for what, that your higher self has for you? How many limits are you putting on yourself beyond you can have the great self image, but who, who else's talk is stuck in your head that's stopping you from getting what you need to get? Maybe you had a reading and it said that you were cursed and this and that. Let me tell you something about curses. 
Curses come through a bloodline, but they but the mind has to be fertile to accept it to a certain degree. So somewhere back there, we in our bloodlines accepted an illusion about something that was not true about ourselves. What is the lie? That we are not God. We are separate from God. And we have to do something to get back to God, right? There's a separation. That's the biggest illusion right there. So everything else, when you feel like you're separate from God and you feel like you are not enough, then you start to feel scarcity. So when you see somebody that has more than you, you want to do something to take it or when you want to knock them back so you can feel a little better about your own inner deficiencies. So once again, like say for instance, the Dravidians and the Tamils of South India, they've been told that they're of uh, the untouchables and they're dirty. Well, if you believe that long enough for generation after generation, it will become the truth. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's not that you should not be honest about certain karmic energies in your bloodline and in your destiny and things like that. But in order to break it, we must break the paradigm, which is the mindset, the box that we have set our mind in and get past it. Atone for what we need to atone for. Apologize when we need to apologize and then move forward. Or maybe accept an apology, maybe releasing. I always say if somebody has done you wrong, it's not always necessarily about forgiveness. Some people do forgive, some people don't, but it's kind of like a karmic charge off. You know, like if you leave something on your credit score for seven years, it'll eventually go off on its own. Sometimes that, that stuff is so old, you just got to say, okay, I can't go back to that. Because if you stay stuck in that, then you have not caught up with the person you are now. You are not still that seven-year-old girl being you know, in a compromising situation that was scary and overwhelming. You are not still a 15-year-old getting beat up or bullied or things like that. And if that's your experience, please know that all seasons change and nothing lasts forever. Okay, so this is going back to I am not my race. I am not all of these other things. Who I am at my core is eternal. And from that truth, that's where, that's where you manifest. I can't do this right now. Like say, for instance, I'm not the tech savvy person. So I'm honest with myself about that. I'm not good with time management. I'm forgive all those things like that, but still finding ways to love yourself and be patient with yourself without coddling yourself, without enabling yourself. You want to work on the things you have control over, but also once again, nurturing yourself based on the truth, not a lie. Because when we trauma bond, we're often trauma bonding because we don't want to change. It feels being uncomfortable becomes comfortable, right? So when we're trauma bonded, we won't sound like he tells you, it's okay, it's okay. But then when you have a new phase in your life where you want to not only manifest what you want, but you want to enjoy it, then you say, okay, I got to get up from being comfortable and I got to put myself through an uncomfortable situation and be honest with myself and get real about myself, about what I can and can't do at this particular phase of my life. And I'm going to put this on my vision board. I'm going to put this in my manifestation tank and I'm going to manifest from a realistic view of myself and my limits and my pluses and my minuses. Y'all feel me? Feel free to chime in. Patreon. Yes. Ryan? Yes. Anybody have any questions or comments so far? And I'll open up the chat as soon as we're done, YouTube. Thank you all for joining. Any questions or comments? So the self-image, your self-image is your personal billboard, right? It's your flyer about what you feel inside. So with that billboard, have you ever seen a billboard and it's, and it's the same business up there, maybe a law firm or something, and they've been up there on that billboard for years. Every time you pass by, you see that same person on that billboard and they'll change. It's the same person, but the billboard changes. So from time to time, as I said, we must go back and self-assess and update our billboard. You know, like just like you're on Facebook, you update your profile picture and stuff. Well, we have to update our self-image from every now and then and kind of sweep out and do maintenance. What, what image do we want to blast out there to others when we walk in the room without even opening our mouth? That's what we work on before we work on our manifestation and our billboards. That way, when you accomplish the things you get, you won't have the imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome comes from, well, once I get this, I'm going to feel better. And then you get it and you're like, ooh, I don't feel better. Ooh, I don't feel smarter. Ooh, I don't feel more powerful. Oh, I don't feel more effective. 
because you've achieved something without working on the inner core. That's where the imposter syndrome comes from. So what we do, we earn our keep by learning the things that we're interested in, spending time being a disciple. Nobody wants to be a disciple anymore. Everybody wants to run off and get titles and do this and be the, be the top dog and get what you're going to get overnight. But discipleship is where your power lies because you're giving yourself time to build your pyramid. Think of yourself like a pyramid brick by brick. A pyramid, I don't think, is not built from the top down. It's built from the ground up. And once again, your inner pyramid is on the inside of you. So building that self up, when you know you're finishing what you start, when you are learning all that you can learn, when you're getting educated in your area of expertise, when you're doing the best you can, where you, where you keep your promise to yourself, when you do what you say you're going to do, you say you're going to get up at this time or you're going to eat at this time or you're not going to eat at this time. You're going to stop doing this. You're going to stop smoking. And when you keep that promise to yourself, I promise it will give you extra boost in your self-esteem. When you finally do what you said you're going to do, that's how you build your inner pyramid. That's how you build your self-image. And a light turns on. The light gets a little brighter. Every time, every time you do something, every, even if it's something small, you say you're going to exercise for 15 minutes, two times a week. When you really do that, and you put the cupcakes down, <laughs> then the light gets a little bright. You feel good about yourself when you come, when you show up for yourself. Because we cannot expect others to show up for us if we don't show up for ourselves. And then when we practice showing up for ourselves enough, then we magnetize and we're able, we're able to show up for other people. And that's going to brighten that billboard. That's going to brighten that self-image, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns? Anybody want to chime in from Patreon? Yeah, I was just going to say I completely agree mm -hmm. with what you're saying. You know, when you build from the ground up, you really build within, and it, it shows. It starts spewing out in every aspect of your life. So I completely agree with you. And good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you. I want to say real quick also. Yes. Um, Good evening, Michelle. Discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline. And if you could speak briefly on the intent, because mm -hmm. I think I saw one of your videos of mm -hmm. what is our intentions and our discipline. Yes. Intentions are extremely powerful. And even sometimes we'll do stuff, we don't even know why we did it. So being honest with ourselves or what, what we really, really wanted, that also helps the manifestation. So thank you for adding that. Thank you, Michelle. So I want to say something that I wrote down here. It's kind of related to what uh, the author Maxwell Moss is saying in the book Psycho Cybernetics. Uh, once again, for those that are just coming in, psycho, I'm not talking about crazy. I'm talking about psyche, soul, psychology, because soul or re, psyche is all, it's all tomato, tomato. It's the same thing. Positive affirmations on a poor self-image is like putting clean clothes on a dirty body. Say, for instance, you've been out rolling in the mud, you used the bathroom, you're sweating, you went for exercise, and you're dirty. You've been digging ditches all day, and, you, and then now you put on some fresh, clean, new clothes, right? So that's what I mean. You can say all the positive self-images you want, but without a realistic view, if in the back of your mind something's telling you, you don't believe that, you don't feel like you're a goddess, you don't feel like you're a queen, you don't feel like you're a king, you don't feel like you can be a millionaire. If something in your mind, once again, that little kid in your mind is telling you you can't or you're too old or you're too young or you're too this, you're too big, too small, if that sponsoring thought is in the back of the mind, it's like taking affirmations and putting clean clothes on a dirty body. So in order to get clean, we do the self-assessment about our pluses and minuses. You don't need a positive self. Uh, you don't need positive affirmations until you have a realistic look at your own self-image. Then the positive affirmations are like icing on the cake and building the layers of self. Like when I did the layers of shirts. Did y'all get that concept? Or what I meant by more and more accomplishments, I'm going to feel better. Every time I get this extra degree, I'm going to feel better about myself. When I get married, I'm going to feel better about myself. When I have children, I'm going to feel better. Layers, 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 but not building the inner pyramid, the self-image. Yes. Somebody said like putting perfume on poop emoji. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, let me see. I'm just looking at the notes that I wrote earlier today that I felt inspired to share. You don't need to lie to yourself to make yourself feel better. You know how they say... Uh, fake it till you make it. 
to a certain degree, but you really got to believe in yourself for that to work. So it's not about lying to yourself to make yourself feel better with certain affirmations. You're a queen. I'm going to keep saying I'm a queen till it's the truth. And then you can become a queen and still not feel like a queen because it's not coming from the inside. You know what I'm saying? Not to use that as an analogy, but that's like a trendy thing that people say to make themselves feel better and big themselves up. You need to give yourself more credit for the things you have overcome and the good qualities you possess that have nothing to do with your achievements or the way you look to a certain degree. And also, once again, the not so great areas of yourself. Let your positive affirmations be based on the truth about yourself. Then build from there. Right? Then build from there. Like you could say, I got an issue with time management, but I'm... I, I'm still a good person. I'm not going to steal from somebody or, you know, different things like that. For example, you can say, well, this is, I'm still working on this, but I'm great at this, you know? So that's kind of what you want to build from rather than saying a bunch of stuff you really don't think is true yet. Right. And then when you finally do feel like that, when your inner pyramid is built, then you can truly say those affirmations and it will be true. Right. Because once again, the subconscious does not know the difference between the lie and the truth, but the sponsoring thought does. So that means we cannot lie to ourselves. There's always that default in our animal brain, in our human brain that says, uh-uh, that ain't what you really think. You don't think that. So you got to get past that barrier in order to really dig in and for it to feel right and for it to feel authentic. Um, hold on one second. How to remember your positive qualities. Remember a time where you finished what you started successfully, which I already said. Um... Yeah, I pretty much said all that already. Hold on. Yeah. So just remembering the things that you have overcome that you didn't think you could come through. Or say, for instance, if you have a money confidence issue, remembering like, okay, I really needed to pay for this thing and it was an emergency and it manifested or came through. Remembering those times and keeping a track record of that, that's what you want to eulogize. That's what you want to bring up. Always giving creator the credit and ancestors, guides the credit for helping us. Um, in the times where we needed a good miracle, but remembering the times where we made it through, that also builds our confidence. So in the 44 tier, we're going to be working this month with the self-image board where we're looking at the realistic um, aspects of ourself. And I don't know if I'm going to go into the Facebook group or not, but we can work on that from there in our meeting that's coming up um, this month for that. By the end of the month, I'll let you know when we're going to do that. So I want to invite you all to, if you must say any affirmations, before you get up in the morning, putting your hands on your head, ori, higher self, over soul, whatever you call this thing here, your download center, your spiritual computer, ori, support me to see the truth about myself, good and bad. Ori, support my self-improvement from this assessment. So you can say something like that, paraphrase it. This is just kind of a blueprint hypothetical example. Ori, support me this Ori, support me to see the truth of myself, good and bad. Support my self-improvement. As I improve, my experiences improve. As I improve, my relationships improve. As I become more authentic with myself. I have more authentic experiences with things and people, other people, right? So once again, begin to eulogize yourself based on the things that you've come through and ask your higher self to show you the areas where you're unaware, the 12th house area where you're self, not you, where you lack self-awareness. Oh, I wasn't aware I did that. I wasn't aware that I rubbed people the wrong way in this type of way. Ask your higher self to show you that and help you work on that and give you ideas because not everything is going to work for the same person. It's like a prescription. What worked for one person may not work for the other person. Ask your particular higher self, your oversoul, ideas on what you can do to build your inner pyramid and to work on those areas you need work on. And I promise your subconscious is so powerful. It's so much bigger than who you are. It will answer you. 
it will never fail to answer you. It's never separate from you. It's all about getting in alignment with it and listening, turning the TV off sometimes, turning off the voices of other people and the expectations of other people sometimes to hear what it has to say to you, especially early in the morning. Right when you wake up, when you have that epiphany, before you go to the party in the morning, that's, th that's that voice. That's that voice that's speaking to you. That's that voice that's speaking to you before you drift off and go to bed at night. It'll tell you what you need to work on and what you need to do. It may show it in, the, in um, if you're not paying attention, it's going to show you in numbers on the license plate in front of you. It's going to show you signs in nature or seeing certain animals in nature. It's going to figure out a way to get the message to you that, hey, it's time to update the self-image. It's time to update your billboard that you're putting outside. So the first house is what people see about you, your image, but it's not but it's more of a mirror, the outside of what people see of you. But it's what's behind that mirror, kind of like the Wizard of Oz. That's the part you want to really work on because that's going to make the outer mirror shine more. Let me make sure I covered everything. Um, a few questions, once again, which I kind of talked about. If you were an ethnic group that you don't like or don't admire, would you still like yourself? Right. So if there's anybody, I hope nobody feels that way. Or if I was that group right there, I would, would you still like yourself? Number two, if you were a different gender, which I asked earlier, would you still like yourself? If you had different circumstances than the ones you're in now that are not as great as the ones you're in now, things were worse. Would you still like yourself? Uh, if you didn't have certain titles, would you like yourself? If there was no cosmetics, no surgeries, no bundles, no fashion, no designer labels, any more on this planet. Would you still like yourself? Um, if your skin were viewed differently, would you like yourself? Maybe you love your, you love the skin you're in. If it was different, would you like yourself? Um, if the if the situation was and circumstances were different, would you still like you? Because once again, you are not your skin, you are not your clothes, you are not what you can buy in a store and buy on the on the internet. You, your inner self, your eternal self that leaves this body when you close your eyes, that electrical energy that is you, do you like that energy? Because that's the energy that's going to be with you throughout lifetimes. We can never run from ourselves. We can go from this side of the world to that side of the world. We can go to the realm of the ancestors. Where we go, we take ourselves. So if you think passing away is going to make you feel bad about yourself, no. It's a bunch of ancestors over there and spirits who, who are still working on their self-esteem and their self-love journey. So wherever we go, we take ourselves. There is no escaping ourselves. There is no pill to escape ourselves. There's only delaying us getting back to ourselves and getting to that moksha, which is like nirvana, where we're feeling... Oh, that own energy, that unconditional love of the creator. Because that's where the creator resides is in our self-acceptance. Because if you have an image of yourself where you feel like something is unacceptable, your image of God is going to be that of that, oh, I got to do this to be acceptable to God. I got to do that. I got to do that. I got to do this to get my mother's love. I got to do this to get my father's love. And when you always, I got to, I got to, I got to. And yes, service is good. But when you like yourself regardless, when you know that the love is unconditional between you and the cosmic one, then you build from that and then you can love other people in the same way. And that's why we are lacking that so much in this day and age of what they call Kali Yuga is because nobody is building their inner pyramid from the top. Everybody wants an insta pyramid building from the top to the bottom. And imposter syndrome because it's all these titles and accomplishments and things and everybody looking the same. And then we haven't built our inner self up on the inside. And it's time for that. The biggest accomplishment that we can know and accomplishing this life is knowing, leaving this world knowing a little more about ourselves, more than anybody else. Because if we lie to ourselves, then we can't get mad at somebody else lie to us. If we deceive ourselves, then we will attract those that will deceive us. I hope you follow me. Um, I was asking also, if you had a certain disability, would you still like yourself? So we're just stripping down just a checklist to make sure, are you liking you? Are you really loving you beyond just taking a bath with flowers and doing a yoni detox, do you love yourself beyond that? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, questions and comments? <laughs> Anybody from Patreon? Yeah, um, I, since I've been doing this work, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things have been coming up for me specifically. I remember somebody saying the uh, manifestation 
you are it is inside of you mm-hmm. and it's so funny because you know when you said uh we, we tend to think of manifestation as external if i get this car if i get these um certificates this guy this marriage everything is going to be okay mm-hmm. and there is something about working in i don't even like to call it the reverse i think it's the right way <laughs> the best way to do it mm-hmm. um so i find myself um especially in the morning waking up and saying okay uh i want it to be so easy for me to to connect deeply mm-hmm. with people i want it to be very easy for me to understand and listen mm-hmm. very clearly <laughs> like i'm I ask for those things because I, I think the external stuff follows, but there's something about being able to to care for myself in the best way, but also to have that spill out to others mm-hmm. is helpful. Yes. And yes. yesterday, um, I did a spiritual bath, and I had a dream <laughs> after that night, and. Um, I was, it's so funny, I left my uh, phone on mm-hmm. and the was that I listened to, and you know on TikTok it'll repeat, mm-hmm. and I'm, it's like I'm in this boot camp or something, and I'm being stubborn in the boot camp, and it was like, I asked for this boot camp, but I'm just making it difficult for mm-hmm. myself, and then I woke up and I was like, it's me, the mm-hmm. call is coming out the house. Yes. And so funny um i i think maybe it has something to do with this eclipse telling me you have to let go mm. of this resistance so it's, it's something i'm going to be working on but this conversation is so relevant to what i'm experiencing so thank you thank you Jose, for joining us and thank you for your powerful input thank you um kind of like bouncing off what you're saying the magnetism that I'm talking about, that we're talking about building your inner pyramid. When you do that, let me show you something real quick. Let me go get something. This is a live, so excuse me. I'm going to take my baby girl's toy to give an example. It's a magnet. So when you're building your inner magnetism and you are feeling better about yourself, not based on things and goals, but just who you are as a being, the good and the bad of it, then you become magnetized. Then you meet another person who's going through the same healthy journey, having a healthy relationship with themselves. And you just meet up like that. It's nothing where you got to put some glue on it. A Velcro, it just happens. See? See how this is just, and they're sticking. It's harder to pull them apart. This isn't Velcro. It's magnets. Then you keep going. When you start treating yourself better based on being honest with yourself, then you can treat other people better based on, and attract people that will treat you better based on who you really are and not just, you know, the outer trappings. Then you meet another person and it attracts. And then more and more people, and then it becomes a community of people who are feeling good about themselves and they're building themselves like pyramids. Otherwise, everything else would be like putting a piece of gum on paper or putting a piece of gum here and just hoping it sticks. You know what I'm saying? So things happen naturally and connections happen naturally and what you want to manifest happens more naturally when it's done from a place of inner authenticity based on the self-image. Once again, this has been um, our Patreon meeting tonight and also YouTube presentation tonight based on Psycho-Cybernetics by the late Maxwell Maltz. Um, I'll kind of say a new thought leader, but this is uh, nothing's new under the sun. Uh, I advise you all to please go back and read the self-image if you have read it or check it out and read it not just once but multiple times until certain things sink in. I know everybody's for audiobooks. They have it here on YouTube, but... To be able to put notes in a book based on revelations you get while you're reading something, it's so profound and powerful, and nothing can take the place of that. So that's my two cents. 
So I'm going to close out um, the live stream this evening and then I'll open the comment section. Feel free to comment all you'd like. I didn't, I wasn't able to come on Friday, but I said I'm going to come on tonight and try something different, uh, merging Patreon with YouTube tonight. Difference being that they can comment. And so I'll open up the comment section. So y'all have a wonderful night. Remember, you want to build your inner image from the bottom to the ground up. So if you must bob the build or anything, bob the build yourself. Okay, so have a wonderful evening and I'll see y'all soon. Good night.